Hi folks, I'm Ashley Lucas and this is the team from Living on LOP, What We Learned in Prison. And we thought we'd talk to y'all today about what the process of creating this video series has been like for us. And to start us off, I wanted to ask Patrick Bates, who is the person who had the great idea that got us started, to tell us a little bit about how the video series came to be a thing. How did you get the idea and what did that look like? So with all the COVID-19 stuff going on and, and um, you know, social distancing and isolation, you know, I thought, about, I thought about the term isolation and it reminded me we're, like we're, when we were in the inside, we were completely isolated. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to show what a bigger form of isolation looks like when you force isolation from like from the entire, from an entire society you know, family, loved ones, or in, in, just all the way in general. So I figured it'd be like another way to inform people about how to deal with that isolation so we could like, you know, you know, people that's been incarcerated and formerly incarcerated can um, actually, you know, maybe give some advice to people and, you know, show them how we dealt with our more harsher form of isolation. Um, and it also was a huge opportunity to um, get narratives from um, oppressed people that are, you know, that are captured inside of um, correctional facilities or were captured inside of uh, correctional facilities, rather. And um, so the name "Living on LOP" we came up with in the meet in the meeting. So we was thinking about names for the project, and I was like, we could call it "Living on LOP." loss of privileges and it's got a few meanings. One being loss of privileges, like uh, that's that's in uh in reaction to a misconduct in prison. What happens is a punishment for uh, any misconduct you catch, you either get put in a hole in isolation or you'll get put on LOP. But it's got a bigger meaning, loss of privileges, as far as the loss of privileges from society, right? And then, the third meaning would be the loss of privileges from what people ha are dealing with right now. Loss of privileges such as not being able to get your hair cut, not being able to go to the mall, to the movies or whatever. The pe you know, those are, um, those are privileges, I guess, opposed to rights. That's true. And I, I love the metaphor of loss of privilege for what we're facing right now. Cosine, could you talk to us a little bit about why you wanted to be involved in this project and what it means to you? Um, when Pat brought um, was talking about the idea, I just immediately seen so saw so many parallels, um, mm -hmm. and like most importantly, I saw an opportunity to address what is a common thread for folks who are returning, and that is proving that proving their worth, proving that their story, that their struggle has worth inherently in it, and what value was therefore gotten out of it. And I thought it was a great example to show like the genius that happens when you're inside and you're in that particular environment where you're forced to exercise. I won't say a more advanced because I don't want to place things higher or lower in relation to each other, but a very much more focused and I think survival centered intelligence. And that tends to bring out in you the more, uh, the more subtle and beautiful like creative aspects of, 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 of your experience and your intelligence, right? Like we always say necessity is the mother of invention. And I think one of the things we find we don't really take it, take the time to look into when it comes to that phrase is that the necessity creates genius invention. It's not just it creates invention. Like like necessity didn't just create like you know a piece of chalk to scribble to to, to to scribble on a wall. It created a fountain pen, right? Like this is where it comes from. Like just stages in this. And so I thought it was a really great opportunity to show society that folks who are typically um, who are typically thought to have less and have nothing to contribute to society, actually in their own forced isolation, are showing you the genius and how they got through this and using that to assist those, like Pat said, who are now all of a sudden experiencing the loss of the, of the actual privilege that we're always talking about. I thought it was a great, great opportunity to showcase that. And so like that alone had me like all in. Me too. That's why I thought this idea was well worth doing. Sri Ram, you got drug into this to be our creative genius to help record everything that's happening and teach us how to make films. What made you want to work on the project? Uh, I think it was something in my intuition told me to do it. And I was really interested because 
I know that a lot of people that come out of like very, you know, high intensity, high pressure environments end up becoming very enlightened to a sense and they have, they always end up having so, like learning so much about the world and especially the truth. And they're very well able to articulate that and spread that. So I think it was very cool to even have the opportunity to speak with everybody and hear these lessons, hear these stories. And it was like, it was incredibly beautiful, incredibly beautiful. Yeah. And Ali, you had already been doing prison creative arts project work for a while, and you're a member of the Carceral State Research Project team, like Pat and Cozine, and now Sri Ram is too. Um, but what made you want to do this work as opposed to some other kind of work on these projects this summer? Yeah, I think um, for me, just the idea of storytelling is really compelling. Um, and just like capturing these experiences um, in these in these short videos that are really accessible um, and that can kind of go out into the world in a way that like digging through an essay or looking on a website can't really happen. Um, something that's really important and really appealing to me. And just, yeah, these stories don't, get told a lot in a meaningful way. So to do it um, really mindfully and to have Sri Ram and this amazing team working together on it, I think is really special. So I'm very glad to be a part of it. Me too. It's definitely been the best part of my summer and a real gift. Now we've released one video at the time of this recording and we're getting ready to release a second one tomorrow, but how are y'all feeling after the launch of the first video? What reactions are you seeing and how does it make you feel to have one of those videos out in the world? Pat, do you want to talk about that? Um, well, from like my own, from my own like personal, like, I don't know the word, like, I don't know if I want to use the narcissistic, I don't know, like my own, I don't know. I don't know, but anyway, I'm very, very proud of being a host slash executive direct producer. Uh, that's like huge for me, right? That's just personally, but I don't know. It's just like, I, I'm, I'm just happy that people get it. Like it's more than just, you know, not to take away from our the narratives that we know and what we know, but it's always, you know, we're always stressing the trauma and what happened with in prison, but we don't never show like it's it's hard to show community. It's hard to show what that community looks like, and that, you know, because it's it's like you we could talk for days and days on about how community looks in there, and I feel like the way we're shorting it out and giving these people little small examples of our of what we make community look like in there, is just a great thing because a lot of people don't really want to hear about our trauma, like they don't want to face. It. But they still, but the, but it, it, but with these videos, that the, the, regardless, they'll have to face the human aspect that, that they are dealing with. Great individuals that are that are being captured right now. I think that's beautiful. Does any of the rest of the team have responses to what it feels like, Sri Ram? Yeah, I really, I really thought it was like this awesome thing. Really seemed to love it and really respect it, which is great. And yeah. I, I, like, I really think that we have to figure out more and better ways of getting it out there because I think people are engaging very well with it and more people simply have to have the opportunity to get their hands on it. And I think if we can figure that yeah. out and do a lot of lot of impact, you know, it's gonna it can really it can really, really has a lot of potential. We just have to like really make sure everyone gets a chance to check it out. I think so too. I think part of the broad appeal of what we've managed to create is that everybody feels really approachable in these stories and the media right. and the world at large has told us that people who've survived incarceration are either not approachable or you're not supposed to talk about that thing in their lives. And That's the truth deep. is that for a lot of people, prison is a part of their lives that will always be a part of their lives. You can't pretend that it didn't happen and it shouldn't have to be a thing that you hide. It should be a, a life experience that we could respect people's learning and growth through that time and, and figure out what ways that makes them uh, able to navigate the world today. And that's what I'm hoping people will see in the series. Yeah, I think one of the things I like the most 
about the series. I mean, obviously it's beautifully shot. The storytelling is great. The hosting is great. Um, but I also love the fact that it does not present any anyone, no one who's interviewed is present presented as a, um, how do I say this? When, when, the, when the story pulls on your heartstrings, it's not out of some overriding sense of pity, right? It's out right. of recognition and appreciation for how they went through what they went through and came out on the other side better. It's a real yep. folks and appreciation on what they learn and how they use that to better themselves in an environment that tried to force everything but that, right? It's completely tried to reinforce the opposite of that, but somehow these folks found that through their struggle. So it's the fact that this, the pain, the trauma is not highlighted as an individual thing, is highlighted as something that the individual got through. And yep. that's what I like the most about it. And I think that's one of the strongest stories that come from it. And that's so obviously seen in the video. Yeah. Sri Ram. Yeah, I was going off with Cozine, so I completely agree. And it's like, it's just pure, potent truth. And the truth humanizes and equalizes everything. So, like, that's, like, these people are just spitting, like, straight facts. Like, it's just, it's just the most realist thing that, it's like you, someone can give somebody is like a lesson from that moment or like just they're just spilling out like what's inside of them like what's in their souls that's why it's so like it's, it's very it's very strong you can feel it through the visual you can feel the people through the screen yeah. or, yeah. i think it's also really important that the videos show like how different everyone is um and how everyone who's being interviewed and is doing a video has had these different experiences and like there's all of these different angles. Um, and it's not, like I think sometimes when we talk about prison and incarceration, it's just like, it's all lumped together. Um, and it's talked about in this way of like these really broad experiences and these videos break it down in like a really beautiful individual focused way. I agree. I think we do people an immense disservice when we pretend that the the 2.3 million people in prison in the U.S. and the millions more around the globe are all the same person living mm -hmm. through the same thing. That that yeah. stereotype is definitely something that we're working against. And I think we have to wrap up this conversation now. We thank you all for watching and for everybody who loves somebody in prison right now, our hearts and thoughts are with you and with the folks inside as they survive in this really scary time in the pandemic where people in prison are more at risk than the rest of the world. We pray for their safety and their well-being, and we wish all of you the best as you navigate your own time during this moment of loss of privilege. Thank you. <laughs>